Uh, thank you for staying with us here on ITV. This is Roto 2019. I'm Uyi Agumofwebe. Uh, we are going to continue, as I told you last week, uh, have these conversations about the 2019 election and all of the issues uh, around it. Uh, so much has happened uh, just uh, since after November 18, when the, all of the candidates of all the political parties, especially the two major ones, the APC and the PDP, uh, reeled out their plans to transform Nigeria from what the country currently is to what they think it ought to be. Of course, uh, since Sunday, uh, we've had uh, different people speaking up about the next level agenda of uh, President Muhammadu Buhari, who obviously is the flag bearer of the All Progressives Congress, that is the APC, and of course, uh, former Vice President uh, Alahaji Yatiku uh, Abubakar, who also is uh, flying the flag of the People's Democratic Party, uh, the PDP, who says uh, he wants to make Nigeria work again because he believes Nigeria had worked before and uh, can always work again if we have the right leadership in place. But again, in the course of the week, uh, former President uh, Chief Olusegun Obasanjo has warned Nigerians against those he, in his words, uh, refers to as thieves and hooligans. He says Nigerians should be careful, they should thread very carefully uh, just to ensure that they don't hand the country uh, over to thieves and hooligans. A lot of persons have been talking, Islanders everywhere, Nigerians across the board have been talking. But really, what are the implications of what we have come to see in the last couple of days? I mean, between uh, November 18 and today. Of course, uh, INEC uh, evidently has lifted uh, the ban on campaign. It means, as somebody said uh, uh, sometime in the course of the week, uh, politicians now, especially those who have ambition, will be on the loose in a manner of speaking. But we need to make sense of all of this to ensure that uh, we cut right through the noise and the nuances and put things in the proper perspective. And join on this program for this week by someone who is interested in what happens in this country and is ready to lend his voice to the conversation anytime any day. Uh, Leo Bagua, thank you for coming on the program. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Let, let, let's talk about um, the 2019 election, especially since this uh, whole agenda unveiling has taken place. Of course, I'm very sure you are aware that uh, uh, President Muhammadu Buhari has talked extensively about what he wishes to do, what he intends to do, if and when he's elected or re-elected in 2019. And then on the other hand, uh, His Excellency, former Vice President Atiku Abubakar also has told Nigerians that he wants this country to work again. Both of them have spoken extensively about their plan for this country. What have been your thoughts between then and today? Uh, <clears throat> thanks for having me. The, the issue on ground hmm. at the moment uh, is between two tested personality. Okay. Uh, Nigerians had tested uh, the, the former vice president, Atiku Abubakar, mm. uh, when he was a vice president to uh, Olusegu Obasanjo. And uh, in the past, we have also tested General Muhammad Buhari. And also, you know, today he's the present, uh, or rather the incumbent uh, 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 president presiding over the nation. Right. So we have had chance, the Nigerians have had chances to have uh, known the person Muhammad Ubari, the president of this country, and also the former vice president. I think uh, the issue here is how do we now actually distinguish between these two personalities? Because this person has the kind of charisma that he carries. Mm. But who is willing to take this country out of reception, which we are? I think the, 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 the position there speaks volume. Because if you look at what the former vice president has said, mm. he said, you know, he wants to get this country to work again, which means Nigeria has been working before. Mm. He got to a stage, everything went stand still. So we have to make it work again. And that is why he's, he's putting up his program, bringing out his agenda. Some of his agendas, which I've actually looked at and read, you know, have to do with this... Uh, uh, PPP, private partner, uh, uh, public private partnership, pu public uh, mm -hmm. private partnership, right? You know, which they've also done in the past that has actually helped this nation. So, most of his agendas are something that I see that can actually make this country uh, work again and I, I, that is actually doable. Because, uh, uh, in the past, you know, someone actually said, 
uh, the government has no business doing business. Mm. That you better allow the uh, the, the, the private uh, uh, a partnership, you know, to take over the business of this country. So I expect that uh, having looked, having checked the agendas of these two uh, gentlemen mm. who are contesting us at this time, then one will now know the direction that this country is going to face. Also knowing that uh, the, the present or the incumbent president has told us that he's going to the next level. Right. So my thinking is which level mm. do we go to uh i belong to the petroleum industry and the, as of today the level the petroleum industry is is a level we are not supposed to be we are not supposed to be there in the sense that this country nigeria takes our crude out of this to the, out of the shore of this nation to a different country outside nigeria refine this product and bring the finished product back to us okay what about the byproducts you leave them behind so what kind of country will now take a product a crude out of this country refine it and bring the finished product which is to say nigeria as of today is a consuming nation and not an industrial nation if the product that we are having here, we cannot also make good use of it. We cannot industrialize our nation with the refinery we have. That is to say, at presently, mm. Wari refinery is not working. Kaduna refinery is not working. If it is working, the federal government as at today would it have been the sole importer of petroleum. So products. how about the stories we hear about some of these refineries you've mentioned working? However, not at optimal capacity. Are they working at all? When you say not at optimal capacity, mm. I think that thing is actually English. Okay. Uh, so let's break it down to what is on the ground. Let's, that's right. Mm. Now, uh, uh, looking at what is on ground, these refineries are not working. The, you know, the, the, the federal government cannot just tell you that uh, the refineries are not working. The next thing they tell you is, uh, oh, it's not working to the... Uh, to the full capacity, with mm. optimal capacity, with the, uh, to use their word. Right. But it will also interest you to know that during the days of uh, uh, Atiku Abubakar, as and, a vice president, and, as a vice president, mm. that these refineries were sold. They were sold to, to, to private individuals. That it was the invent or the incoming of uh, uh, Yardua. Mm that decided, you know, probably to take these uh, refineries back and I think pay those guys off. And, the, you know, the country, uh, you know, say, begin to uh, run this refinery again. But since then, what has been happening in, that, in the refinery is that, you know, uh, it's either the refinery is broken down or we are repairing it or, you know, there's, there's always been stories. And when I also read his agenda, uh, Atiku Abubakar, he also talked about, you know, this sell, sales of this refinery, mm. you know, to the, 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 the private uh, 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 players, uh, players right. you know, to take over this refinery. Though probably... Would, would that be a smart move coming from somebody who has been a key player in the uh, petroleum industry? Of course it's a smart move. Mm. Of course it's a smart move because I, at present I have come to see that there are certain group of people that benefits from that refinery there are some groups that benefit with uh, 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 breaking down of the refinery once it's broken down they tell you we are repair you know they, they they benefit through the repairing of that refinery so in your own theory the more it breaks down the more money they make the more it breaks down the more money they make so there are some groups who make their money through the breaking down the refinery mm. and there are some groups who also make their money from uh, the refinery itself when it's working because what they do is this when the refinery works does not work for full two three months okay. it works for a while and two or three weeks later they tell you it's broken down at present the refinery is not working and probably I, I, I my understanding has been that about a few months ago now for about two or three months they've been doing some maintenance Okay, after that maintenance, whatever this, pro this refinery produce, whatever product it produce, they sell these products to the uh, private depot, leaving the federal government depot behind. So there are also groups who also make money from selling this product
to the uh, 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 private depot. So these are different, there are a kind of different cabals, different on different sections. So the best thing and the best move is what the uh, former vice president has said. Let's sell the refinery to a private uh, 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 individual. If, if, Nigerians, this, if the Nigeria government wants to have a share, probably about 10% share of that uh, 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 refinery, that's fine. But let it be a private partner, uh, partnership uh, control instead of the federal government indulging in tomorrow we may maintain us. Next tomorrow the, uh, the, the, the refinery is on, the other day is broken down. So holistically, mm. when you look at the direction of these two uh, key players in this political arena, right. one would know where this nation will go because at the moment everybody wants this country to work we want the economy of this nation to work everything is on a light, it's just on a standstill you cannot imagine now for you to run a generator in your for instance like itv now a diesel will cost you about 270 naira per liter if a diesel costs you 270 naira per liter then that is to say what do you expect for the common artisan in the street who uses petrol or even a, another a, a diesel generator to run their saloon or barbing shop how can they make a living in the course of the week i spoke with a few gentlemen like yourself on uh, one of our programs and one of them asked a question i think it was a bit striking they said if um, former Vice President, His Excellency uh, Alahaji Yatiko Abubakar actually has what it takes to fix this, this country and make it work again. Uh, why didn't he recommend those same um, ideas, as it were, to former President Olusha Basanjo while he was too I see, so to speak, mm. to him at the time? Do you, do you see any sense in that? No, I, 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 I actually don't see anything, any sense in that because if you look at the time Obasanjo took over this nation, mm. 1999, and looking at where this country was coming from, right. from the baggages of the past military uh, rulers or military leaders that have taken over this country, he was able to build a nation. Obasanjo, during that pre period of eight years of mm -hmm. uh, Obasanjo Atiku, they built a nation. Building a nation, a lot of institutions were was put on ground. They, they, they were the one who brought in ICPC. They were the one who brought in EFCC. They were the one who brought in this uh, uh, PPP uh, uh, project that we are talking about. Then they also brought in other mechanisms, mm. other institutions that will make the economy of this nation work. You see, the truth of the matter is that it takes time. You know, when, when you lay a foundation, it takes time for people to actually see the structure that you are trying to put on top. But however, I, I feel that at a point in time, you know, the country derailed. The red in the sense that uh, when the uh, present administration took over, it took them six months to have a cabinet. It took the country six months to have a minister. There was no single minister in all the ministries. In all the ministries. Okay. There was no ministers. So what could you have expected? And this country is being run by portfolio uh, 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 businessmen who get their money from foreign countries, you know, to invest into Nigeria. Mind you, this is not Nigeria is not a production uh, production nation. We do not produce anything. All we do is consume. We are just a consuming nation. So when it now takes you six months to build a government, what do you expect? All those men, those businessmen. Uh, or they, 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 they take out their fund on a capital flight and leave the country. As at then, the country began to lose his team. Because you should know that at a point, Nigeria was becoming, I think, if not the, 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 the first in Africa, the, 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 the most uh, highest economy mm. in Africa sub-region right. during the time uh, uh, Jonathan was there. But when this momentum now slow down, that is what brought us to where we are today. So for a government to come in and you did not kick, you don't kickstart your project on time, whatever you want to do, 
most especially when it has to do with the, uh, the, 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 the economy. You see, you don't play politics with economy. You could play politics with other things, but not the economy of a nation. Because that would destroy the country. And it will also destroy the lives and properties of the citizens. How? In the sense that one, the moment the economy of this nation is destroyed, you will now have a lot of unemployment. And when you have a lot of people who are unemployed that are in the street, mm. they have to do one or two things to survive. But talking about unemployment, uh, let's just uh, redirect this conversation. Uh, former Vice President Atiku Abubakar also talked um, substantially about his plan to create jobs mm. in millions on an annual basis. When we look at all of this, beyond the rhetorics, mm. what, what is the chance, what is the possibility that these are things that are realistic? It's, do, it's, do, it's doable because uh, I heard him talking about uh, apprenticeship. Yes. Uh, because uh, in the recent times, you go to these mechanic workshops, you find it difficult to see any apprentice. Mm. The same thing with this, uh, any of the artisans' uh, workshop. The only place you can see people these days are these ladies that are doing uh, salon, mm, the, hairstylists. the hairstylists and uh, the tailors and those. But when it comes to, uh, you know, mechanic, electricians and welders, you know, these people, they find it difficult, you know, to get an uh, uh, apprentice. Mm. And before this time, there was this uh, directorate of... Uh, the ID, National Directorate of Employment. That's, that's it. Mm. So... If we can just return back to those days of national directorate, mm. then whatever he thinks, whatever job he wants to create, is doable. Because when you go through these people, having learned these skills, they can also assign you to any of these uh, probably mechanical shop, where being welders, electricians, they can also you know uh, uh, put you there and also see how best uh, the government can pay. Mm. At a point, a few years ago, I was discussing. Uh, with you know one of my auntie and he said she said she created job for the elder brother and I said how he said though the elder brother wasn't working with her mm. she was working somewhere else but she was the one paying her, his salary mm. I said how he said he doesn't she doesn't want him to stay at home so by so doing he, he makes sure he work with somebody else but he she pays the salary that over time that the person he is working with might know the usefulness of his personality okay. and get to know that okay i think somebody has taken the, uh, the load enough then i will take it from there what am i trying to say is that you know these are packages that the federal government can afford mm -hmm. give these boys out to any of these uh uh uh, uh offices and let them be working there and over time pay their salary probably for a year or so and uh, let from there on let the, their, their boss begin to pay as a kind of welfare mm. so uh, for me it, it is actually doable. President Buhari to uh, talk about different uh, uh, segments of the economy and of course uh, different aspects of our national life as mm. a people. He particularly mentioned education how that uh, some thousands of schools would be built and renovated on a year to year basis uh, then how that these schools will have uh, upgraded infrastructure, equipment, and all the tools that the teachers need to make education and teaching more fun and more effective. But again, as it stands today, Nigeria, we understand, between 2014 and now, has never at any point budgeted more than 40% of the entire budget, or allocated more than 14% of the entire budget to education. Hmm. Conversely, UNESCO recommends a minimum of 26% of the entire budget. How do we address that issue? How do we make that a reality where budget, there's so much of budget deficits as far as education is concerned? And, and you know, education drives the economy hmm. in any country. So if we have been paying, as some persons have called it, lip service hmm. to the issue of education, and here the president who doubles as the flag bearer of the APC for the 2019 general election, presidential election that is, is saying that uh, a lot will be done in specifics as far as education is concerned. How do we marry that? Uh, I don't see, I don't actually know what he's going to do because okay. if he cannot do it now, uh, in the next four years, I don't think he can actually do anything. But what if all he needs is more time to realize it? 
I, I don't know what time he actually needs. But I think for now, he has declared uh, education to be uh, the other day he did, uh, emergency. Mm. You know, he declared it, uh, emergency on education. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Which is a bad thing. He, he has just told us that the educational system in the country has failed. So by so doing, uh, probably he, he wants to restructure or probably he wants to do something. But actually, like you said, the, the, the vast budget of this nation is supposed to go for education, not only to, for education, also for research. Mm -hmm. And when you are also talking about education, you, they, I think what Nigerians also need to know is that the technical education right. must be involved. Because the, 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 the society has cut out so much of that technical aspect of education. Mm -hmm. Whereby these days what we produce are just paper uh, 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 graduates. graduates. You know, they just come out with their certificate and none of them have any skill. So if he's talking about the tech, bringing in technical education, I will understand that. But whatever t budgeting he's doing, which does not carry along the technical institutions, it is going to fail completely. Because you cannot run a nation, you cannot run a nation, or rather education of a nation, without carrying along the technical aspect of education. Mm. Let me tell you this. If you leave the shore of this country, and you needed the services of a carpenter, then you will know the value of having an idea mm. of being a carpenter here in Nigeria before you travel out because you can't pay. And if you must pay, it is per hour. You don't just call a carpenter and say, come and work for me. It's per hour. So if he spends two hours with you, then that's what you're going to pay for. The same thing with painters. So, Education without skill, to me, is zero. The technical education must be imbibed into our educational system. So as it stands right now, you believe uh, what we're dealing with is misplacement of priorities? Oh, completely, sir. Completely, sir. Every person today in Nigeria will tell you, I have certificates. They, they, they are all brandishing certificates. Nigeria has gone beyond that. The Nigeria of today has gone beyond brandishing of certificates. It's now skill. What kind of skill do you have? Are you skillful? Are you employable? Because most of our people are not employable. The other day I listened to the health minister. He said, and actually he was telling doctors that some of you are going to end up being a farmer. And which is true. Why would that be? Why would that be? Because where are the hospitals that they are going to work? Where? We had a hospital here in Ring Road, which was commissioned by His Excellency, uh, the president of this country. Up to today, it's not functional. So, what about the doctors that we uh, who graduated a few more, a few years ago? Where are they? I want to believe that some of them are still roaming the street looking for jobs. When we have this kind of conversation, apparently, it will essentially be about national development and growth mm. overall. Uh, some persons have argued back and forth about how that we shouldn't make the mistake of calling. I mean, trying to compare Nigeria with countries like, I mean, industrialized countries mm. like the U.S., Canada, Germany, and so on and so forth. In fact, uh, just uh, earlier, uh, somebody had said that America had experimented with democracy for well over 200 years, mm. and Nigeria has just had uninterrupted democracy of essentially less than two decades. Uh, do, do you think we are in a hurry to develop? We are not in a hurry enough. Mm. Any person who is making that insinuation, to me, is not... Uh, does not want the development of this nation. I would, I would have been better than this if I have an elder brother who I was looking up to, who, would I, who, is, who, who I would call my role model. Mm. Nigeria, have, Nigeria as a country, have America, have America as a role model to learn from their mistakes. Who did the Americans learn from? So we have an opportunity to learn from the Americans, to learn from the British, to learn from the Germans, to learn from all these Europe countries. So much big opportunity that we cannot afford to make our mistakes. So for you, for somebody to say, oh no, you don't need to compare, who says so? Every holiday, that person takes a visa and goes out of this country and go to where? Do they take their passport and go to their village? They go to the Western world. 
So if you go to the Western world and enjoy these infrastructures that was put in place there, and enjoy this uh, 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 kind of lifestyle mm. that you see there, can't you bring it home? The, the, the institutions are working. So can't we make our institution work? You see, my fear in all this, the election is around the corner. It will surprise you to know that a lot of Nigerians will not go out to vote. Why would that be too? Oh, they don't trust the INEC. They don't trust the umpire. They don't. They don't trust the INEC. They don't trust the police. And, and these are strong institutions. These are strong institutions who are supposed to be umpires. You are not supposed to take side in any election. It could be your mother contesting. It could be your daughter, your son, your brother-in-law. But Nigerians have no confidence in these two institutions. But INEC has assured and reassured that they will be unbiased and neutral all through the process. So what else should they be doing, really? That, to me, has that actually helped? Has that actually helped? You see, not until you, 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 you have an, a, a, a kind of a, pun, you put in a, a punishing measure mm. on the side of the INEC and the police. Who should do that? Oh, the, the legislatures. Mm. They have to come, they have to again look at the electoral reform. And see how best they can punish the uh, electoral uh, umpires. Because I don't think there's any sanction on them. Not just placing a sanction, making them to lose their job. But, but we've seen many cases, maybe hundreds of them even, where we are told, for example, in the news that um, uh, several airing members of staff of INEC had been not only arrested, but already prosecuted, some of them already sentenced even. Isn't that a step in the right direction, at least for a start? For a start, it's a, it's a step in the right direction. Mm -hmm. But also, the, the, it, it, it needed to be extended to okay. the, to the, to the uh, uh, will I say, the, to the uh, uh, police institutions. Mm -hmm. It needed to be extended to the police institutions. And including to the uh, collecting officers. Whether they are, because I think they are, they, yes, the, 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 the professors, the, the, the they invite from any of these uh, universities mm. to be the returning officers on the election day. There must be a, there must be a punishment for it because the moment they are indicted, they should be made to lose their job. Once you are indicted in an election, because from you misconduct see, from from misconduct mm. from misconduct because the problem is this: the the issue now is no longer the parties versus parties accusing each other. It is the parties accusing the institutions. So you as an institution that is saddled with the responsibility of conducting an election, mm. a free, fair, and credible election, and you are seen to be taken side, not only seen by Nigerians, but also seen by international communities, does that not speak volumes? And also, the, the police institutions who are supposed to, you know, uh, uh, guide against this kind of abnormalities, you are also seen to be taken side. The campaign has started now, and of course, politicians, particularly those who are flying uh, the flags of their respective parties, mm -hmm. will come at Nigerians with several promises and tell them all of the things they've always told them every election cycle. What exactly would you expect to hear this time, different from what you had heard in past elections? What I want to hear this time, really, Uye, mm. is somebody to tell me how he's going to make the economy of this country favorable. People have always said they would make it favorable in the past. What are the indices? Mm. What are the indices? How are you going to do this? Show me the indices. That is why I told you in a while ago that we are seeing, we, are, we have on board today 
two tested personalities. Right. What you cannot do now, you can't do into the future. But you they were tested in two different capacities. Well, you, you can't give what you don't have, no matter your capacity. One was a vice president, the other one was a president. And we also know that when one was a vice president, he was a part of the economic team. And we see the economy work in the days of Obasanjo. And today, we also see the incumbent. So to me, I believe you, 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 you don't give what you don't have. Nigeria has seen 18 straight years of, um, 19 even, 19 accountant, yeah. 19 straight years of uninterrupted democracy. Do you think the progress, if any, across sectors that we recorded so far as a country and as governments over time can be said to be commiserate with the number of years we've experimented uh, with? Yes. Yes. Could we have done more? Uh, we could have done more mm. in the side of corruption. Okay. So you think uh, there, there's so much of lag? There was so much of lazity mm. in checking those that were, you know, saddled with the responsibility of running this nation. Okay. Uh, most times, they, they, they use our collective wealth to enrich themselves from what we have seen. But however... Uh, would one have, would have been able to stop them? Mm. No. But the only difference would have been when they were caught, if they have gone to jail, that would have served as a kind of deterrent to others. So in, the, in, 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 in that aspect of corruption, mm. uh, you know we, we you know we actually lack it but in infrastructure we've done well you know the 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 roads and you know trying to see how they can uh, uh, diversify on the uh, electricity you know taking it from the federal government giving it to the private individual by privatizing it and private by you know by privatizing it mm. and as well then the institutions, they also tried so much in the institutions. In, in trying, in the process of trying to uh, 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 curb corruption, mm. you know, that was when they brought in EFCC and uh, ICPC. Right. But unfortunately, these institutions are brought in to govern Nigerians. And you know Nigerians are smart people. Mm -hmm. Sometimes either they are smart, the institutions, or the institutions sometimes look the other way. That is why, for now, uh, some persons or most of us will say, you know, the the corruption uh, crusade is one-sided, and it's not supposed to be so. The law is supposed to be an axe both sides without fear or favor no matter the divides mm. no, no matter your political party no matter your personality we're, we're going to talk a little more about uh, corruption yeah and uh, fighting the the monster head on and uh, just uh, after we take this quick break and then we'll be back shortly do stay with us as the race for 2019 elections hats up Join Sonny Duke Okosan every Friday, 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. as he brings you profiles of key actors, insights, and in-depth analysis on the issues as they unfold on the road to 2019. The stage is set as the political gladiators try to outwit and maneuver their opponents in the politics or politics on the road to 2019 with Sonny Duke Okosan. Tune to ITV on Go TV Channel 107 and Star Times Channel 130 every Friday, 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Road to 2019 on ITV, a must watch. Uh, thank you for staying with us uh, on the program. Just a while ago, you were talking about uh, corruption and the fight against it. A lot of persons have argued vehemently that corruption is institutional in Nigeria and it's so established that there's uh, the likelihood it cannot be fought successfully 
Uh, do you share that thought? Of course, there is no way in the world that you can fight corruption successfully. Mm. It is the institutions that fight corruption. Okay. Not individual. When you, when individual begin to fight corruption, corruption will fight you back. But when the institutions begin to fight corruption, then they will win the war. You see, corruption has no border. Are you following me? Right. Corruption has no border. Be you president, be you whoever you are. Once you are corrupt, you are corrupt. And when these institutions are fighting you, when these institutions are after you, they should be allowed to go all the way down, not to be controlled. So the truth of the matter is that we must allow the institutions to fight the corruption, not individual. People will say, like the credit most persons give to my president mm. today, Buhari, that, oh, he's fighting corruption. And I say to myself, when he's out of power, who fights corruption? Which means, is that the end? So instead, the institution should be strengthened. The institutions should be strengthened. Right. The institutions must be, not should be, but must be strengthened to fight corruption. Even a junior officer, you mustn't be the, the head of any organization before you begin to fight corruption. The institutions must be strengthened to fight corruption. When the institution begin to fight corruption on itself, by itself, then corruption will become a thing of the past. When the file is sent to your table and you have the capacity to query that file, then there's an issue. Probably if, 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 if a file was sent to you for the purchase of a phone, just a cell phone, and you discover that that's, that's just one cell phone, it's written one million naira. Huh. And you approved it? Give me a break. So you should be able to say no, query it, and send the file away. But the moment you are paying, with me, you are supporting corruption. So when the institution is fighting the corruption, you who approved it, will be found complicit. Of course you have to go. You, so, you, 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 I'm very sure you took out time to listen to uh, the campaign promises as they unveiled their agendas on Sunday, mm -hmm. uh, 18th of November, both uh, President uh, uh, Buhari and then former Vice President uh, Atiku Abubakar. Mm -hmm. Do you think both of them in their presentation addressed adequately the, uh, their counter-terrorism agenda or strategy? Uh, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Both of them? Both of them. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. I don't think so in the sense that I was waiting to hear more about the police reform. Right. You didn't hear that? I, could, I, you know, I couldn't hear that. Mm. Because these days, the world has gone a different direction. It's no longer the days of analog. These are the days of computer. So I was expecting to hear you know, how they are going to improve on the police service commission and send more of these police officers into, uh, uh, you know, or rather have a kind of uh, ICT uh, program for these uh, police officers, mm. you know. Because these days, gone and gone are the days you go to roadblock and begin to block people and say, I search you, open your boots, let me see what you are carrying. The terrorists of these days are computerized. So if you must be a police officer, if you must be one that fights crime, you must also be equipped with the technical know-how of computing. 
So if you are not also in the computer world, there's just nothing you can do. Because leave this country, travel out of this country and see. The moment a police officer stops you, he takes you straight into his car. With your car number, he fits in your car number into his computer. He knows who you are. He knows where you work. He knows where your wife works, how old she is, and how many children you have. Right there. So, if you are also a criminal, he's there because he's carrying the database along. So, how many of these police stations is computerized? A man that commits a crime in Zamfara and runs to Benin and is arrested somewhere in Siloko Road, are you sure that if you take that man to the police station and put his fingerprint on a 16, you'll be able to detect that it's a wanted man in Zamfara? Are we sure? So all these things need to come to play. Because without, you know, thinking of how to computerize the nation, you need to computerize the nation completely. Without doing that, you can't fight terrorists. Some persons have argued time and again that one way we can fix this country and make it work real time is one will uh, find a way to, as they say, flush the old hands and bring in fresh blood. Does that answer the question of uh, leadership deficits in this country for you? <laughs> no, no, no. There's no, there's no way you just flush out the old hands and bring in new, new blood. Uh, the old ones are a sarcopedia. Mm. They have a wealth of knowledge, which we always tap into. Okay. Must they be in office for us to tap into that knowledge? Put that again. Must they be in office for us to be able to tap into that world of knowledge? Can they retire and then we still tap from the knowledge? Uh, sometimes it's difficult mm. to tap from a knowledge that has been retired. Okay. But I also know that the, the Secret Service, they do that. Mm. Even while they are retired. Okay. That's overseas. Overseas. Mm. The Secret Service do that. Right. Even while they are retired, their services are still very useful. Relevant. Very re re relevant. Mm -hmm. But I don't know how that is here in Nigeria. But however, a leader without a successor is not a good leader. So over time, when you are in office, you must also build up a subordinate that is going to take after you. But I, I also want to believe that most of the problems we are having, you know, is this issue of, uh, it's, it also goes back to corruption. Where you now use a, a, a square peg on the round hole, which is to say, somebody who is supposed to take over from you, yes. who has been your subordinate all all those years, uh, you know, instead of him taking over from you, but because of connection somewhere, quote and unquote, power from above, they bring in somebody else and uh, to take over from you. And probably that person they are bringing in have no idea of how things works right there. So oftentimes the people just kind of cross their hand and say, okay, let's see how it's going to work. Which also goes to corruption. So if the right people are in position, you see, Nigerians has always seen corruption as money. Stealing money. Does it go beyond that? Well, of course it goes beyond embezzlement of money. Corruption goes beyond embezzlement of money. When you get a job that you are not supposed to get, when you use your position to influence anything, it's corruption. When you are in an office and you use your position to influence an appointment, it's corruption. But here in Nigeria, we just see it as, ah, my uncle is connected. My auntie is connected. He has a lot of connection. That's not connection. That's corruption. So until we begin to fight that, 
we will not have a better nation. And that is why our institutions are, are being destroyed. Nigerians must see corruption beyond embezzlement of money. Let, let's, let's talk about uh, other political parties. Because uh, some people have said we, we focus too much on the PDP and the APC because obviously these are the two biggest players in the league, mm. as it were. What are the other political parties that are not very prominent, may not have all the resources like the APC and the PDP do, uh, supposed to be doing right now in light of the 2019 general election, which of course is upon us. You see, that is where I have issues with INEC. Mm. When you begin to register all these political parties, right. what are your parameters? Most of these parties don't have even a councillor. Some don't have local government chairman. You know, you, I can begin to call, not in the House of Representatives, not in the House or in the Senate. So you must give a kind of timeline. Mm. Okay, we are registering party A, B, C, and D. If in the next four years you can't produce a, you know, uh, a candidate, on so so and so, you know, you, if you, if whatever you, office, whatever office, if you any of your candidate does not win any election in any office, then we we'll strike you. I out. know you're not a lawyer, but won't that infringe on their rights of association? I'm not a lawyer, but I don't think so because you were also given a timeline. Right. You were given a timeline. Mm -hmm. These are the you, these are the basis of your registration. It's like you understood those terms before. And you, you accepted you those terms before you, 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 you registered. You, before you got yourself registered. All right. So once you agree to it, then you must abide by the rules. Mm. But a situation whereby you, 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 you just hang in there and begin to make money from all suspended Nigerians in the name of a political party, that itself is corruption. Knowing fully well that you cannot achieve what you want to do. Over time in this country, we have seen political parties collapse their structure and join the bigger players. Do you see that happening this time? Of course, a lot. Mm. Of course, it will. Of course. What's usually the motivation for that? <laughs> uh, sometimes it's monetary. Okay. Sometimes it's positions. Mm -hmm. Uh, most times they, they go into agreement and you know that would give you position but my my pain in all this is that even in the advanced world that is not how it's done okay in the advanced democracy that i have seen even when they are collapsing their structure to your platform when they negotiate and when the position is given to them on that government, they still, they, are, they still carry the flag of their party. Won't that create conflict of interest of sorts? No, just look at it. For instance, for instance, uh, we say PDP. Hmm. Then uh, AZ party, hmm. you know, form an alliance. Hmm. And at the end of the day, I don't know what the agreement are. And AZ so, says, okay, if you win the presidency, give me a minister, a ministerial slot. And once that ministerial slot is given to AZ, at the end of the day, he still says a minister under AZ. Oh. The, you, you, you get my point? Mm -hmm. Oh, a minister for aviation under party AZ. So the identity doesn't change on account of the position? No. It's not supposed to. Because the truth of the matter is that the negotiation you went into was not personal. Okay. It wasn't personal. You went into a negotiation on a party uh, platform. So any position given to you must carry the identity of that party. But here in, the, in Nigeria, any negotiation you go, you go into is personal. You just mentioned advanced democracies of the world. What should we as a country be learning from them? 
these are one of the things these are one of the things are some of the things we should be learning yeah it's a good thing to you know form a coalition to win an election mm. but when you are forming the coalition in, in, in your terms of reference when you're putting up a memorandum it has to be stated that whatever position you are giving out to party A or party B during the you know during your discussion that party that position will be tagged to the party I, I don't know if you get me clear Absolutely. that positions must be tagged to that party so if about five political parties form a coalition and eventually they won every position that is given out on that party that position must carry the tag of that party so that at the end of the day the 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 the, the electorate who are card carrying members of that party must be seen as being in government not when you collapse your structure you come into a, a, a alliance and the moment a position is given to you it becomes personal and personal to you so i make must put a kind of tag on all these things and say you know what if you form a political party you don't have a position you form a you you, you form a coalition and at the end of the day uh Positions given to you, you know, does not carry your party uh, logo or does not carry a relation. Then you, you, you are sent back. I, I guess you've been hearing things, you've been observing things. So far, would you say categorically from all, of, all the things you've heard, the ones you've observed by yourself, mm -hmm. that Nigerians are excited about and interested in this election? They are excited about the election. Mm -hmm. Interested? No. Okay. Why is that? A lot of Nigerians are not interested. Because they knew it was always, it will, it will always go one way. They have a mindset mm. that the, the government at the center will determine where the election goes. Can't we change that narrative? I don't think so. I don't think so because INEC have not been able to prove themselves beyond board. They have not been able to live beyond board. I make has to prove to Nigerians that they are actually independent body. They have not been able to win the minds of Nigerians. Because once, if you call any election today, go to the street, public opinion, they tell you it's going to go this way. As they say, it, so it goes. It appears it lies with INEC uh, to solely fix the issue of the one-way. That's, that's right. Mm -hmm. Once the, the, the people, the masses will tell you it's going to go this way, and their guess is right. Just because the umpire has not been able to live beyond board. We don't have problems with the electorate. We don't have problems with the candidates. Mm -hmm. We don't have problems with the political parties. The, but the problem is the two institutions that is saddled with the responsibility of conducting election in the country. And also the, the institution that is also saddled with the responsibility of preventing or crime or whatever, whatever, during the, the time of the election, but, but which I mean, is the police and the INEC. So, so, some analysts have also blamed politicians, especially the key players mm -hmm. in the political space, because they say these politicians uh, most times empower thugs who of course unleash violence at different uh, 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 voting uh, polling units across this country so it, will it be fair in that case to blame INEC squarely and not also situate at least a part of the blame with politicians themselves because I they have all the money they have all the resources and all of the influence are they above the law so who should cut them to size <laughs> well, are they above the law hmm. who is above the law in this country Unless they are now telling us that certain persons are above the law. They say, they, 
there is a constitution that is governing this country and there are laws so nobody should be above the law if you can't do the time you can't, don't commit the crime so you must be able to do the time when you commit the crime no matter where you are imported from as talks on the days of on the day of election to cause mayhem or whatever you are doing as at that day mm. but once you are caught then you must do the time so when you allow people to do things with impunity just because they belong to the ruling party or probably they, they belong to the big money bags what kind of message are you sending we are having problem in this country in the sense that people are not adequately either uh, convicted or punished for crimes that's, that's correct they committed. So when you see somebody who, who have just committed that crime walking free in the street, mm. so next time you are like, okay, if this guy can do it and get away with it, then I'll do it too. So the institutions in this country must be strengthened. Let's put it all together now as we wrap up on the program. With, with all of this we have in front of us, as being our reality as a country and as a people. Mm. What, what are your expectations in 2019? I'm expecting to see a credible election, mm -hmm. free and fair election. And I want to hope and I want to believe. And I also want INEC to prove me wrong. And also the police stations that they will be fair in all ways and in all manners and i allow and to, so that they can allow the electoral process to continue otherwise this is not the democracy we all we are yearning for okay i, I think that's uh, how we're going to tie it up uh louis bagua uh a, a public affairs commentator uh, has been talking to us about 2019 election and very salient issues uh, regarding that big event that uh, most nigerians are looking afford to want to thank you especially for coming on the program we thanks for having it. me thanks and that's our road to 2019 for this week we'll see you again next week i am uyi thank you for your time and goodbye <laughs>